What if the universe we see is only half the story? In March 2024, deep beneath the border of France and Switzerland, something unprecedented happened. A team of physicists at Kern activated one of the most advanced quantum simulations ever attempted. Their goal was simple, model the behavior of particles at the edge of reality. But what they found wasn't simple at all. The data didn't just challenge physics, it suggested the existence of a structure, a layer of reality that we've never been able to see, and the implications reach far beyond the laboratory. This is that story. Let's start with what we know. CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, is home to the Large Hadron Collider, the most powerful particle accelerator ever built. For decades, scientists there have been smashing protons together at nearly the speed of light trying to unlock the fundamental rules of the universe. They've discovered the Higgs boson. They've explored the nature of antimatter. They've peered into the first fractions of a second after the Big Bang. But recently, CERN has turned its attention to something even stranger, quantum simulation. Unlike traditional experiments that physically collide particles, quantum simulations use the principles of quantum mechanics to model realities that are otherwise impossible to observe. Think of it like building a virtual universe, one governed not by approximations, but by the actual laws of quantum physics. In early 2024, researchers at CERN's Quantum Technology Initiative began running a simulation designed to explore the behavior of matter under extreme conditions, conditions that existed only in the first microseconds of the universe's birth. They were searching for anomalies, patterns that didn't fit, echoes of forces we haven't discovered yet. And on March 12th, at 3.47 a.m. Central European time, they found one. Dr. Amara Okonkwo, a theoretical physicist leading the project, later described the moment in an internal memo. She said that at first they thought it was a calibration error. The simulation was generating outputs that didn't correspond to any known particle interaction. But when they re-ran the sequence, it happened again. Identical structure, identical signature, what they were looking at wasn't random noise, it was order, a repeating self-organizing pattern that emerged spontaneously in the simulation, like a shadow of something that wanted to exist, even though the known laws of physics gave it no reason to. The team called it the lattice. So what exactly is the lattice? Imagine reality as a fabric, space-time, the stage on which everything in the universe unfolds. According to Einstein, this fabric can bend, stretch, ripple. Massive objects like stars and planets warp it. Energy flows through it. But what CERN's simulation revealed was something beneath that fabric, a deeper structure, a kind of scaffolding. The lattice appeared in regions of the simulation where energy density spiked beyond a certain threshold, conditions similar to what existed during the universe's inflationary period just after the Big Bang. In those moments, the quantum fields didn't just fluctuate randomly, they organized. They formed nodes, connections, pathways. Dr. Mikhail Sokolov, a quantum field theorist collaborating with the CERN team, offered this comparison. He said to think of it like ice crystals forming on a window. The water molecules are chaotic, bouncing around. But when the temperature drops, suddenly there's structure, symmetry. The lattice behaves similarly, except it's not matter that's organizing, it's space-time itself. But here's where it gets strange. The lattice didn't just form, it persisted. Even after the simulation's energy conditions returned to normal, the structure remained, embedded in the virtual space-time like a scar, or a memory. And within that structure, the team detected something even more unsettling, information transfer. The nodes of the lattice weren't static, they were communicating, exchanging quantum states across distances, instantaneously, in a way that resembled quantum entanglement, but on a scale that shouldn't be possible. It was as if the lattice had become a network, a substrate, a hidden layer of reality with its own rules. Now, let's be clear, what CERN discovered wasn't a literal new world in the way we might imagine. An alien planet, a parallel dimension, or a gateway to another universe, at least not yet. What the simulation revealed 
is evidence that our universe may have hidden layers, regions of existence that interact with our reality, but remain invisible to conventional observation. Think of them as dimensions folded so tightly or vibrating at frequencies so different that we simply can't perceive them. This idea isn't new. String theory has long proposed the existence of extra dimensions curled up at scales smaller than atoms. Quantum mechanics suggests that particles exist in superposition, occupying multiple states simultaneously until observed. But the lattice takes this further. According to preliminary models, the lattice may represent a stable hidden structure, not just a theoretical construct, but something that could, in principle, support complexity, organization, maybe even processes. Dr. Alina Vasquez, a cosmologist reviewing the Kern data, put it this way. She said that if the lattice exists in our universe, not just in simulation, but as a real feature of space-time, then we have to ask, what lives there? Not life as we define it, necessarily, but information, patterns, structures that evolve according to rules we don't yet understand. In other words, the lattice might not just be a backdrop, it might be active. Some researchers are now calling it the sub-quantum realm, a hidden dimension of reality that underlies the quantum world we already know, a place where the ingredients of existence are assembled before they emerge into space-time as particles, energy, and force. If this is true, then every atom in your body, every photon of light from the sun, every galaxy in the observable universe may be the surface expression of something far deeper, and we've only just begun to see it. So what does this mean for us? Let's start with the science. If the lattice exists, it could explain some of the most stubborn mysteries in physics. Dark matter, for instance. We know that about 85% of the universe's mass is invisible. It doesn't emit light, doesn't interact with normal matter in any way we can detect, but it's there, bending space-time, holding galaxies together. What if dark matter isn't a particle at all, but a manifestation of the lattice, a gravitational shadow cast by structures in the sub-quantum realm? Then there's quantum entanglement, the phenomenon where two particles remain mysteriously connected, no matter how far apart they are. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. But if the lattice is real, entanglement might not be so spooky. It might simply be particles linked through hidden pathways in the subquantum realm, communicating through channels we can't see. And then there's the big one, consciousness. Now we have to tread carefully here. There's no scientific consensus linking consciousness to quantum mechanics, and many physicists are rightfully skeptical of such claims. But some researchers are beginning to ask, if the lattice is a layer of reality, that organizes information in complex, self-sustaining ways, could it play a role in how awareness emerges? Dr. Yuki Tanaka, a neuroquantum researcher, offers this carefully worded perspective. She says we don't know what consciousness is, fundamentally. We know it correlates with brain activity, but correlation isn't causation. If there are layers of reality we can't directly observe, layers that influence quantum processes in neurons, then we have to at least consider the possibility that mind and matter are more intertwined than classical physics allows. It's speculative, it's provocative, but it's not unscientific to ask the question. Because the truth is, every major breakthrough in physics has required us to expand our definition of reality. Newton showed us that gravity governs the heavens. Einstein revealed that time is relative. Quantum mechanics taught us that observation shapes existence. If Kern's discovery holds, we may be on the edge of the next leap. A recognition that the universe is not a singular stage, but a layered one. That beneath the particles and forces we study, there may be an entire world, silent, invisible, foundational, waiting to be understood. Of course, this discovery is just the beginning. The lattice was found in a simulation, a quantum model of reality not reality itself. And that raises an important question. Is the lattice a feature of our universe or just a feature of the math? Dr. Okonkwo addressed this in a recent interview. She said that simulations are powerful, but they're not proof. What we found is a prediction, a suggestion that under certain conditions, space-time should behave this way. Now we need to test it. 
That means looking for evidence in the real world. Gravitational wave data. Particle decay patterns. Cosmic microwave background anomalies. Anything that might hint at an underlying structure. And the search is already underway. Teams around the world are reanalyzing existing data, looking for signs they may have missed. The Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO, is reviewing signals from black hole mergers, checking for microfluctuations that don't fit standard models. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope is examining the oldest light in the universe, searching for patterns that could indicate spacetime wasn't smooth in its earliest moments but textured, granular, lattice-like, even quantum computers are being enlisted. If the lattice exists, it may be possible to detect its influence on entangled particles, subtle distortions, incoherence, that hint at hidden dimensions. But beyond the experiments, beyond the equations, there are deeper questions. If we do confirm the lattice exists, what then? Could we interact with it? Could we send information through it, the way we send signals through electromagnetic fields? Could we harness it, tap into the subquantum realm, the way we tapped into electricity, into nuclear energy, into the quantum world itself? Or is it something we're meant to observe, but never touch? A reminder that no matter how far we reach, the universe will always be stranger, deeper, more mysterious than we imagined. Let's step back for a moment. It's easy to get lost in the science, the simulations, the theories, the technical language. But at the heart of this discovery is something profoundly human curiosity. For as long as we've existed, we've looked at the world and asked, what else is out there? What can't we see? What truths are hidden just beyond the edge of our perception? The ancient Greeks theorized atoms, particles so small they couldn't be divided. They were right in a way, even though they had no microscopes, no particle accelerators. Galileo looked through a telescope and saw moons orbiting Jupiter, proving that not everything revolved around our fellow Earth. It shattered the cosmic order people had believed in for centuries. Einstein imagined riding a beam of light and discovered that time itself could stretch and compress. Every leap forward came from someone willing to ask, what if the world isn't what it seems? And now in 2024, a team of physicists asked that question again, and the universe answered in a way they didn't expect. The lattice, if it's real, doesn't just change physics. It changes our place in the cosmos. It suggests that we live not on the surface of reality, but in one of many layers. That the atoms we're made of, the light we see, the thoughts we think, might all the rest on a foundation we've never perceived. It's humbling, and it's exhilarating. Because if there's one thing the history of science has taught us, it's this. The more we learn, the more we realize how much we don't know. And that's not a failure. It's an invitation. So where do we go from here? The immediate next step is verification. Kern simulation needs to be replicated independently. Other quantum systems need to be tested. Data from observatories and detectors around the world needs to be combed through for supporting evidence, if the lattice is real. The signs will be there. Subtle, perhaps. Hidden in noise, but findable. And if it's confirmed? Then we enter a new era, an era where physicists don't just study particles and forces, but the architecture of reality itself, where engineers might one day design technologies that interface with the subquantum realm, where philosophers and scientists together grapple with questions about the nature of existence, consciousness, and the limits of human understanding. It won't happen overnight. Science moves carefully, deliberately, but the door has been opened. And once a door like that is opened, it's very hard to close. Dr. Vasquez, the cosmologist we heard from earlier, said something in a recent lecture that stayed with me. She said we spend so much time looking outward, toward distant galaxies, black holes, the edge of the universe, but maybe the most profound discoveries aren't out there. Maybe they're inward, beneath, in the very fabric of the space we occupy. We've been standing on a mystery this whole time, and now, for the first time, we might actually be seeing it. In March 2024, a quantum simulation at CERN revealed something extraordinary. Not a new particle, 
Not a new force, but a new layer of existence. A hidden dimension of reality that may underlie everything we know. It's still early. The data is fresh. The theories are forming. There's so much we don't understand. But that's the beauty of it, isn't it? The universe doesn't give up its secrets easily. Every answer leads to a dozen new questions. Every discovery reminds us how vast, how strange, how utterly magnificent existence really is. We are explorers on the edge of the unknown. And the map just got bigger. If discoveries like this fascinate you, stay close. Subscribe. Because this is only the beginning. The universe is just getting started. Before we go, let's talk about how quantum simulations actually work, because it's pretty incredible. Traditional computers use bits, ones and zeros. Quantum computers use qubits, which can be both one and zero at the same time, thanks to a principle called superposition. This allows them to explore multiple possibilities simultaneously, like testing every path through a maze at once, instead of one at a time. When you apply that to physics, you can model the behavior of particles and fields in ways that would take classical computers billions of years. You can model the behavior of particles and fields in ways that would take classical computers billions of years. But there's a catch. Quantum systems are incredibly fragile. The slightest vibration, temperature change, or electromagnetic interference can cause them to decohere, lose their quantum properties, and collapse into classical states. That's why CERN's simulation is so impressive. They managed to maintain quantum coherence long enough to simulate the extreme conditions of the early universe. And in doing so, they stumbled onto something no one predicted. It's a reminder that sometimes, the most important discoveries aren't the ones we're looking for. They're the ones that surprise us.